sorry, that would, that's for a Democrat show. Let me know when you're ready. No matter what the technical difficulty is, this man is a professional. He goes all the way to... What you represent to them is freedom. Was an extremely great conservative commentator. We're tearing it up on Wednesday night. This is awesome. This will allow me to record. Well, this is Jersey Joe for uh, the Reverb Comic Sense Show. 8 p.m. on shrmedia.com. Actually, I just totally screwed up. This show contains language that some viewers may find offensive. Listener discretion is advised. And now on to the show. And welcome to the Reverb Common Sense. I am your host, Jersey Joe, and I'm trying to make sense out of the senseless. The Jersey Takeover is here. We have expanded to two hours every Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Do you want a sports show? Or do you just want a kick-ass t-shirt? Go to reverb.one backslash shop. That's R-E-A-V-E-R dot O-N-E backslash S-H-O-P. Also, you can pick yourself up a life-saving survival bracelet. So, um, I had a phone call last night um, from my parents. Hi, Cal. And uh, the phone call was about um, my mom going, what the hell is this shit Hillary says she always already won? Fox has it on that she's already won and all this shit. Uh, So I had to explain to her that they're trying to do a psychological warfare. And what that's about is it's trying to disenfranchise voters, which I find funny. Democrats are always trying to get people to go out and vote, but now that Hillary's losing, and yes, Hillary is losing, why else would you pull this shit? You don't pull this shit if you're winning. You don't take the chance of it hurting your campaign unless unless you're losing. That's when you pull this shit. When you're down in the dumps. When you can't make up the difference very easy. So they have to disenfranchise voters. They're trying to put it in everybody's mind. Well, Hillary's already won it. I heard it on the news. Well, there's no sense of me going with voting. Or the other mindset that they hope for is everybody wants to go with the winner. And that's why they have her up in the polls. Everybody wants to back a winner. So I'm in the minority. I, 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 I'll go along with everybody else's voting or the, well, I'm the only one that's feeling like this. So I, maybe I'm wrong. I'll vote for Hillary. Everybody else seems to know better. That's what they're doing. They're doing a psych ops. They are trying to screw with your head. And get you to vote for Hillary. She's that far behind. Because I'll tell you what. She's so far behind right now, she's not even campaigning. Yeah, she has a couple of dates here and there. She's just going out and collecting money right now on it. Because she knows she's going to need money either A, for a huge defense, or B, to get the hell out of the country. It's so I had to explain to my parents. I can hear my dad in the background bitching. What if Fox have a goddamn crystal ball? And my dad doesn't do this stuff. I've never in my whole life heard my dad yell at a TV or make these type of comments about politics. Never. Now all of a sudden this shit this year. And he's bitching away. Yeah. 
and I, I, I know Hillary's out there doing some events. I know that. But you want to know something? Trump's out there doing three events a day. Hillary has everybody else going out there. Hell, who was it? Uh, Tim Kaine held an event here in Florida recently. And they are, they always lie and try to tell you how they have these huge crowds. They're keeping up with Trump. Even though it's just that. A huge friggin' lie. Because I'm sorry, 30 people showing up. Is not a huge crowd. 30 people showed up for a rally for Hillary Clinton, hosted by vice presidential candidate Tim Kaine. Going to start calling him Tim Conway, but I don't want to insult Tim Conway like that. It's the other thing is, I love this pay to play allegations. They tried to give it a soft word for Hillary. Pay to play. She was involved in a pay to play scam. She was involved in a pay to play while she was in the uh, State Department. She was in pay to play. Doesn't sound that bad. Sounds very soft. Which Democrats love doing. No, it's called bribery. She was bribing people. Hey, you give me this money to the Clinton Foundation and I'll give you favors from the State Department. That is bribery. Plain and simple, bribery. Um, The problem that the Democrats also are having right now, big time, is... There's a lot of Democrats that stepped away from the party. Between what Obama's done, what Hillary's doing, uh, just the activity that's going on, how Trump's talking, a lot of Democrats have walked away from the party. And the problem that the Democrats are having is, I walked away a long time ago. But we know the playbook inside and out. We know their tactics inside and out. I mean, pretty much most people are waking up and know the tactics also. They know the tactics inside and out. So... uh, They're not fooling many people. Well, I'll be going as soon as the show's done. I'll be getting changed. Um, well, you know, I'm doing the show for my house, so I'm in a pair of shorts and t-shirt. Um, I don't know what it is when I go out and about. I live in Florida too. If I go out. I got to put jean pants on. I can't go out in public without pants on. I don't know what it is. So, um, I'll go pick my parents up. Uh, I'm going to, we're going to head to early voting and there's going to be three votes cast today. Yeah, I'm here, Cal. I'm here. Uh, And I'm going to head out. And we're going to vote for Trump. We're still discussing what we're going to do down ballot. Scared me, Kel. You scared me. I thought maybe I wasn't broadcasting or something. I started searching around, make sure that I was up and running. Um, We are unsure what we're going to do down ballot. Um, Hmm. 
<clears throat> Rubio is not a senator that I want, but Patrick Murphy is worse than Rubio. See, this is what I'm getting tired of, and this is not Trump because I do not think Trump's the the better of two evils. No, I I I I actually have been backing Trump for a long time and feel that he's a good candidate. How oh, I'm reading in, uh, I think it's Illinois. This person lives. Uh, illegal aliens are going, or excuse me, yeah, illegal immigrants, legal aliens are going door to door, knocking on doors for Hillary Clinton. Of course they're going to do that, of course, because they want her in so they can get citizenship in the United States, so they could break our laws and get away with it. And I was talking to my neighbor last night about this. And it's kind of funny because I had a bunch of kids walk past my house last night screaming I'm a racist. Look at you, you bald-headed white guy, you're a racist. Because I have a Trump sticker or Trump sign in my yard. And my neighbor, we're sitting there talking, uh, ex-Air Force, uh, great great neighbor uh let's put it this way um i talk about the issues i'm having financially and everything i'm not doing good because going through disability my ac broke i had an old ac that was breaking down constantly and that's how i got to know this neighbor because that's what he does is acs he'd come down and fix it this is what the parts cost me get me the money when you have it don't worry about it he did it all the time like that. And he looked at me and go, this is what neighbors are supposed to do. We're supposed to help each other out. So this is how I got some several neighbors were all like that. We try to help each other out. We're always looking out for each other. I mean, we're looking out for everybody's houses because, well, if shit's happening at one house and we're not care, we don't like that person. We don't pay attention that that type of atmosphere spreads to the rest of the neighborhood. So, yeah, we do. I don't want to say we're pulling uh, George Zimmerman's, but we're paying attention. We're watching. Um, the incidents that I had with the uh, HOA recently, um, the neighbors have also picked up on that cause, and they're helping to step in on the whole situation. But we were sitting here talking, his his daughter, a little bit younger than my daughter, got into Minecraft and we got BSing all night. And yeah, my daughter's into Minecraft big time. Next thing you know, look, his daughter and my daughter are playing together all the time, which is great, great. And, um, so we're sitting there talking. And, and it, it's, he used to vote. Democrat. He never got into politics, really. But when he joined the Air Force, he had to write something down. So he wrote down that he was Democrat. And he's never actually really voted, he said, until this election. He's voting Trump. But we got talking about that racist, especially when certain people find out. And he said, yeah, I get it all the time, which is very funny. The guy's supposed to be racist. Okay. His wife's black. His daughter is half black, half white. That's the funny shit with these people. And they they just go off the reservation, start screaming everybody's racist. They don't know what's going on. I get it all the time, especially when I I shave my head or I try to very often because I'd rather have a bald head. It's easier to take care of. And, um, well, I get the... Well, you're a racist, you're you're uh, a, um, a Nazi, you're a skinhead, because I'm a white guy, bald head. Funny part is, skinheads really don't, they buzz cut their hair, they don't shave it. Well, anyway, it, 
So if I'm supposed to be this uh, skinhead, and I've done it when I was bouncing at bars and stuff, they'd be like, you're a skinhead. You're a piece of shit. Yeah. I married into a Jewish family, you asshole. You're lying, man. Oh, ask people that know me. They'll ask me, like, no, his wife's family's Jewish. In fact, he is, her father, his father-in-law is a Jewish lawyer. Oh, that pisses them off. Because it makes them look like idiots. They People do it all the time. They surmise. And isn't that judging people negatively by appearance? Isn't that being a racist? Let me see. Um... No, that's not the definition of it. it. It's the ones that are uh, screaming racist all the time are the ones that are judging other people based on appearance. That is that. Whew. Um. Also, just letting everybody know. Um. I think it's about. 11.30, we're going to have a very special guest, a good friend of mine, Kel. She's always in the chat room. I love having her there. And um, she has a great show, great show. Uh, I know she's got like two or three going. She's, she's worse than me. I don't want to say, worse isn't, I don't mean in the negative connotation. Um, duh. I, I've noticed that a lot of us that do these shows were very passionate about it and and we just do it do it as much as we can, much as we're able to. Um It seems that everybody's always inviting everybody on their show just, you know, to get to expand everybody. Um I haven't seen too much where oh no, I ain't having you. You're my competition. I ain't talking to you. Oh no, 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 no. I have not seen that within this community of a host it's been shocking it's been breathtaking how helpful and uh brotherly and sisterly uh everybody is they're, they're, it's a community that just it's amazing I, I it's something that i missed when i wasn't doing the ems and fire because within that group uh, that is a family um you could find Especially when I moved down here to Florida, it was like, okay, just find the EMS fire. I found instant family right there. Well, sort of. Uh, but for the most part, you find it's all brothers and sisters. It's So it was nice when I started doing this and everybody's helping each other. I thought it would be a kind of cutthroat, everybody trying to screw each other over for a listener, but nobody's doing that. They're helping each other out, and it's beautiful. Uh, train of thought is lost totally. So, yeah, uh, my big thing is this psych. Now, I know I totally went off the reservation on that one. Um... This psych, um, psych warfare Hillary Clinton's using. And it's like, okay, she can't get out in campaign and keep up. So we're just going to use psych warfare. And, and there's so many people that were Democrats that are used to using those techniques are sitting there laughing. Going, we know those techniques. Yeah, don't think so. And. <laughs> Uh, there's more um, WikiLeaks email drops. I think we're like number 19 on Podesta alone. It's absolutely, absolutely uh, jaw dropping. The Democrats don't even. Oh, my God, they're still going at Trump over that tape. And they asked um, Kellyanne Conway, Trump's campaign manager, did she consider quitting? And her answer was no. 
It's absolutely ridiculous. They, they can't. And everybody's like this uh, uh, campaign. The, the candidates have taken it into the mud. This has been a mudslinging campaign. I wish we would talk about the actual uh, the uh, staple of the campaign and talk about policies and what they stand for. And then what does the media do? Uh, did you plan on uh, quitting um, over that tape that was talked about nonstop over two weeks ago? Uh, did you think about quitting? The media is the one that keeps going to this. They're, they have no substance. The mainstream media is the one that keeps it alive. They don't want to talk policies. They don't want to talk about what each candidate is going to do. Why? Because they know Hillary has nothing. They know Trump's policies are correct and will help the United States out. It will help America out. They don't want to talk about that because that would destroy Hillary even more. So they try helping Hillary and take it into the mud. The mainstream media is the one that's not talking about substance. And then they sit there and bitch, this campaign is all about mudslinging and insulting back and forth. We're so sick of this. Well, then don't do it. Stop reporting about it, you jackasses. If you don't want it, don't talk about it. I mean, I'm... uh, P- John Podesta email from Cheryl Mills about Obama. We need to clean this up. He has emails from her. They do not say state.gov. He was using emails that were outside the chain of event or chain of custody, whatever you want to call it. It's absolutely ridiculous. They are using from a campaign that says, um, we are the most transparent government agency or administration ever. Bullshit. Just like uh, uh, Trump came out or uh, Obama came out and said, uh, we are the only administration that has never had any major scandals. I was just letting that sink in. Obama stated that his presidency has had no major scandals. I don't even know where to take that. The bullshit that is spread by this president. And he has a base that sits there and goes, uh-huh, okay. Oh, he, no, no major scandals, no major scandals. Nope, 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 nope. Yeah, holy shit. I know it's, we always land base this on Hillary. But Benghazi's just as much his fault. It happened underneath his watch. He put the lies out there. The lies of the video were put out there to help him win a re-election because he shot his mouth off saying that there is no... the uh, Al-Qaeda and the terrorists are done with. They're on the run. And then we have a major attack like that. So, of course, it made him look like an idiot. And it's right at election time. So they had to cover it up to make him look good. IRS scandal that, sorry, they don't do that unless told to by the president. Um, Health and service scandal. The Obamacare website, Obamacare. I can just uh, his um, excessive use of executive orders. It goes on and on, but Obama saying, Obama said there is his is the only campaign, or excuse me, administration that has had no major scandals. 
You're listening to the Reaver of Common Sense right here on SHR Media, High Plains Pundit Radio, ICRN Network, Red Nation Rising Radio, YouTube Speaker, and iTunes. We will be right back. Listening to the SHR Media Network. Now, for Amels, we know you may have only one shop to harvest that trophy, so we have thousands of accessories and replacement parts to improve your chances. We know how much you love to shoot, so our gunsmiths' articles and videos will help you do more and get more out of your guns. We also value your hard work and money. That's why only Brownells backs up everything we sell with a 100% unconditional lifetime guarantee. Brownells, the world's largest supplier of firearm accessories and gunsmithing tools. Breaking news. According to the latest report coming out of SHR Media, a merchandise store to support both the Reaver of Common Sense and SHR Media has just been unleashed to the general public. Be forewarned that this site can be contagious and numerous items can be purchased to support the best news programming. Go to Reaver.one website and click on the store link to check out the merchandise. You have been listening to Reaver of Common Sense, hosted by my dad. Jersey Joe. Beware, the Jersey Takeover is here. Every Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you can catch the Reaver of Common Sense show, hosted by Jersey Joe, right here on shrmedia.com and highplainsdailynews.com. Only Jersey can deliver hell like no one else. So consider this your fair warning. In a world controlled by corrupt politicians. You got a business. That you didn't build that. A team of ordinary men emerge from the ashes to give voice to the voiceless and hope to the hopeless. Sackhead Sean. Dude, I'm not saying cap for the stupid bro. Sackhead Clint. All good friends of ours usually show, show up drunk. drunk. Also starring Sako as the producer. I'm a little bit drunk, I'm a little bit drunk, cause I'm drinking, drinking, drinking. They are the Sackheads Radio Show. Every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Pacific on shrmedia.com. Every Wednesday night, 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you can catch the Southside Mud Show with its host, the Jersey Boys, Jersey Joe and Crash, right here on SHR Media and High Plains Pundit Radio, where we will be digging up the dirt. Times are dark. The people misled by corrupt politicians, lied to by establishment media, and deceived by the false messages of Islam. A nation in confusion needs a guide. It needs a man with a cane. I'm Dave Milner. Join me on Spreaker, SHR Media, High Plains Talk Radio, live rebooting Liberty and YouTube for a unique brand of commentary on the unpleasant blind guy. Because truth is not always pleasant. If you miss a show, don't worry. You can catch the replays two ways, RebootingLiberty.com or the ReverbCommonSense.com. While you're there on Reverb Common Sense, don't forget, drop in your email and keep up to date on everything going on, or click the like button on the Facebook widget. Now on to the Reverb of Common Sense.
listening to the SHR Media Network. This show contains language that some viewers may find offensive. Listener discretion is advised. And now on to the show. And welcome back to the Reaver of Common Sense. I am your host, Jersey Joe, and I'm trying to make sense out of the senseless. The Jersey Takeover is here. We have expanded to two hours every Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you want to support the show and support SHR Media, go to reaver.one backslash shop. And we have a very special guest. Uh, Kel, would you like to say hi? Jersey Joe, how are you? I'm doing great, especially now that you're here. Hey, I'm glad to be here. Can you hear me okay? Mm-hmm. Well, fantastic. So what's new? Oh. <laughs> Not much going on in the United States, right? No, it's very boring. <laughs> oh, man, you guys are always so quiet down there. <laughs> Jeez, no news is coming up here to Canada at all. We're not getting anything out of the United States. So quiet. Oh. But I do understand that, yeah, there, there's there's some um, little bumps here and there. Something about an election. Oh, yeah. man. Oh, have we ever been paying attention to that uh, going on up here? This yeah. is exciting. Everybody's really tuning into this election, I think, because we're excited to see what's going to happen next between Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. But, man, so far it has been one heck of a ride for you guys down there. How are you guys enduring it? It, Can you hardly wait for it to be over? (laughs) Well, for me, I'm enjoying it for the show. It makes my show even easier. But uh, for everybody else, a lot of people are just, they want it to be over with. And, And like I talked about earlier, it's the mudslinging that goes back and forth. Yeah. But the ones that really keep it going are the mainstream media. They're the ones that help direct it into this direction. They're the ones feeding the dog and pony show. Yeah. Yeah, they, yeah exactly. If they didn't want it, they all they'd have to do is just stop reporting on it and talk about the issues. That simple. Uh, you know, I have to admit, huh, I, I watched all, all of the uh, debates and... Um, I have to say that I was disappointed with the moderators. Well, because what we ended up with is a moderator, Chris Wallace, hello, Anderson Cooper, what? Oh, my gosh. But I was disappointed in how they uh, conducted themselves as moderators and that they were asking the most asinine questions, yep. non-issues, non-issue questions. And they were really they were trying to make hay out of that uh, Donald Trump's uh, proclivities in liking the ladies. Okay, Donald Trump, um, as a younger man, like the ladies, big deal. As a younger woman and as an older woman, I like the gentleman. And so I thought that is not really an issue. I'm more interested in what's going to happen with the border, uh, immigration, the economy, trade, and international relations, and if the next president can repair all the damages on the global stage that Barack Hussein Obama created. And I'm sorry, I cannot bring myself to call him President Obama because Neither I think can he, I. He, he's nothing but a usurper in your people's house. I don't know how he managed to get the keys to the Oval Office, but he did. But he's done, he has done so much damage over the uh, past eight years that it's going to be irreparable. Like, what happened? And then Hillary Clinton, as secretary, then Secretary of State, the uh, global havoc she created. And so those are things, as, a, as an outsider looking in, I, I think people in Canada, uh, the United Kingdom, Australia, uh, uh, certainly uh, Eastern Europe, and of course Russia, we're all wondering what is going to happen with the next president. Will there be uh, a, a global cohesion once again? Like, what's happening now with... Uh, Hillary Clinton, in particular, threatening Russia with what? Nuclear war? Did I hear that right, or am yeah. I dreaming? Um, she's pushing it. And, and and I've made the comment time and time again that Hillary Clinton gave that reset button to Russia. And she has reset our relationship with Russia all the way back to the Cold War. And to the point of, yes, nuclear war. Um... I'm not sure if I, I heard that Hillary Clinton, I know Russia has said if she gets in, there will be nuclear war. Um, it, it's, I cannot believe how they are trying to deflect 
from the negative press and then the negative issues of WikiLeaks, the Veritas yeah. videos, all of them, that they're willing to start a war with Russia. That is scary as hell. But yeah, oh, exactly. I, I don't remember hearing um, Hillary Clinton, but you know what? It would not shock me if she did, and the press would just ignore it. Oh, oh, and and that is it. A lot of people are trying to dismiss the WikiLeaks, and there is a another, another gentleman out there that has uh, come out with a lot of um, disclosures about the uh, goings on with Hillary Clinton in particular, and that um, these are issues that they're not going to be able to uh, run away from. I think is that I'm sorry, but it's out there. It is a it is it, it's a truth about how Hillary Clinton uh, treated her uh, private servers and what she was doing on them. And everybody knows that uh, she's duplicitous and that she did give out state secrets. She and did it in the she, last debate. She gave yeah. out state uh, top yeah. secret information. Four minutes it takes us to launch. Really? To be honest, I thought it took like an hour. Yeah. <laughs> she has uh, quite the audacity as well. And uh, she, I remember it was the first debate. <laughs> And they were talking about her stanima. Okay, that's the, another thing. Like, okay, all right, you want to talk about Hillary Clinton's stanima? All right, let's talk about Hillary Clinton's stanima. You kind of roll your eyes, and you hopefully it uh, goes away in about less than five minutes, give or take. <laughs> but she was standing there and challenging Donald Trump about the issues of her stanima, and she was rhyming off everything that she was doing. And one thing that she rhymed off was a sitting for 11 hours in a con- congressional hearing. And I thought, you cow, that congressional hearing was to do with your handling of Benghazi. Yeah. But she doesn't even care. She, she she knows that she has blood on her hands with those four uh, dead Americans. But what difference does it make? But for her to just blatantly say, and I've sat in hearings, and, well, you know, that was a money shot for Donald Trump. He, he could have said, oh, yeah, do explain that congressional hearing, will you, Ms. Clinton? And uh, so many lost opportunities. But Hillary Clinton's to the point where she doesn't even care. She's not even hiding the fact that she is uh, has a contempt for the country, doesn't she? Uh, no, um, she is so lost and ha- doesn't give a shit that um, as... Trump was talking about her taking money from Saudi Arabia and yeah. that she's uh, praising that she is for um, the gay and lesbian uh, community. Tr- Trump starts talking about how Saudi Arabia executes gays and she starts laughing. Yeah. What the hell? It's, it's Why isn't like, that plastered all over <laughs> mainstream media? It's like she was more or less connotating. Why are you bothering me? Why are you wasting my time with these trivialities? Mm-hmm. Oh, hmm. Do you know, Hillary, this is your people, the people that you're embracing, the Mohammedans that you want to bring into the country. This is their ideology. This is what they do to people. These are real people losing their lives under the thumb of the Islamic State and the ideolo- ideology of Islam. But that doesn't matter to her. No. No. All that matters is that she uh, gets herself to the White House, and she'll do it by hook and by crook, as we know. <laughs> and, of course, that includes pandering to the voting base. And she's got a huge voting base, base with the Mohammedans because they're loving this. Yeah. The Mohammedans found a new patsy. Obama's out. He's out in November or, or January, technically. And she's in. And they're very, they're very happy because she's an enabler to the Islamic movement, the caliphate movement in particular. But, you know, that doesn't matter to her. Yeah, okay, they throw some gays off buildings. Well, come on, you know, not all Muslims are bad. Oh, no. Uh, the religion of peace, we see how peaceful the Middle East is. Uh, yeah. Well, it's in the uh, uh, WikiLeaks emails that they are trying to flood the United States with all sorts of foreign illegal immigrants so that they can give them amnesty. The Democrats can give them amnesty and therefore shoring up the um, base because they know that they're running their base away right now. Their base is waking up to their bullshit. They can't keep lying. 
and they're losing support. And they know that, so they have to import a whole new breed of idiots that are going to vote him in. Because if Hillary wins this, I, I do not see a Republican getting in anytime soon because there is going to be such change in rules and regulations. They're going to make sure that it's impossible. You have Obama and Holder starting a super PAC, which is going to start pushing for redistricting of maps. Through the WikiLeaks, we already learned that they are in bed with the companies that do those redistricting and that they have paid them off to uh, do the maps in the favor of Democrats so the Democrats will win elections and it will just destroy the Republicans and it will destroy this country as everybody knows it. No, a super PAC. How could they uh, possibly influence something like that? Like uh, That confuses me. It, it confuses me because... Back in the 1970s with the whole Watergate and um, Nixon, which, if everybody remembers, uh, Clinton was kicked off of the investigation for um, being unethical by the Democrats, kicked her off. But they ended up putting laws that limited what super PACs can do and that they couldn't communicate. Well, now what's happening is you're getting these politicians after they get done office. Now, they already know what needs to be done. They won't need to communicate because they know what needs to be done. They yeah. start. They can do unlimited uh, fundraising, so they can raise. Yeah, well, the, go ahead. That, yeah, that's what I understand too. Is that a super PAC? They're not allowed to endorse one particular candidate or politician in particular, or uh, any particular party. But they can independently uh, campaign for or against political figures. Yeah, that's where I get confused. It, okay, it, same here. <laughs> it, it's our system, and I get confused on it. Um, because uh, every pack that I know is out to back one candidate or another. Um, they may they, not. They, they can raise a lot of money, too. Oh, yeah. It, well, you know what? See, this is why I don't understand. You got uh, the Democrats who are complaining about Citizen United and that it allows uh, the do- donation thing to be uh, free speech, that people have the right to give what they want to a candidate. And what they're hoping for is they want to limit what the Republicans can raise because the Democrats, as per the Veritas, Veritas, excuse me, video, they said they do not follow the rules. They count on the Republicans following the rules. They count on it and they know that the Republicans are going to follow the rules. So it's going to limit how much money the Republicans can raise while they're doing all this dirty shit behind the scenes. They're com- yeah. they're actually breaking the laws by communicating with these super PACs, when they're not supposed to uh, communicate with them, and, yeah. and, and they're uh, how this they're worse than the mafia. They are worse than the mafia, and I don't understand how our government, which I know they're part of the government, has turned a blind eye, and how so many Americans go. I want to vote Democrat. Mm. I understand too, though, that there are a lot of people out there that are voting early. And I was just looking at the newspapers this morning, uh, uh, producing the headlines. And in Texas in particular, it's pretty much bottlenecked uh, for people to get in there and cast their vote early. Are, are you noticing that a lot of people are wanting to get to the polls early because they're so determined mm-hmm. either to ensure Donald Trump doesn't get in or Hillary Clinton doesn't get in? Like, how big is the divide with the people of the United States in terms of this election? Because I see a lot of that divisiveness going on, and I, a social division. I see social division. I see economic division. I see a political division. Even the GOP is divided. They don't even – Donald Trump, he's supposedly representing the GOP, and even the GOP are divided on the guy. Like, there is so much division going on in the United States. It's like, how are the people coping with it? I think it's more, it's not so much political party right now that is bringing people together. It's globalist versus Mm -hmm. nationalist. Because you you have plenty of um, Democrats that see this globalist movement going on. And they're going, I don't want a single part of it, and they're stepping away from it. And they're yeah. backing Trump. Um, I, I, 
I hate making predictions. I do. But I, I've made one on the show, and I, a minimum, Donald Trump wins by 55%, if not more of the vote. Yeah, I've heard 85% myself. Uh, I, 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 I honestly can see a landslide in his way. Yeah, let's not dream too big, though, right? No. Um, but if you look at the polls, and just go by the polls, which everybody knows they've been tampering with the polls. But if you yeah. go back to, what was it, 1979, 1980, Carter versus Reagan, at this point, Carter had a nine-point lead in the polls. And Bingo. Reagan won 44 states, I think it was. I could be wrong on that. Don't People don't jump all over me if I'm wrong on the number. But I believe it was 44 states Reagan won that election by. He won in a major yeah. way. And I, I, I know Trump is not Reagan. I understand that. But there's a lot of similarities between Reagan's rise to power and Trump's rise up. They've had a lot of... Yeah. And people forget about uh, Reagan's temper. He had a temper and he had no problem standing up and defending himself. Yeah, I don't think there's such a divide as the media is making it out. Um, out on the street, I haven't found a Hillary supporter. I always, the adults I talk to are Trump supporters. I have yet, even my in-laws who are die hard, and I mean die hard liberals, they're voting Trump. If that tells you anything. They know. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting that you bring up the issue of globalism because I am very concerned about any politician, especially a leader of a country that acts like a globalist. And Hillary Clinton, she is a globalist, mm-hmm. and we do not need a globalism. We do need to maintain our nationalism. What's the point in being a country if you can't protect your borders? Can I and, interrupt and you real nationalist? quick? I, uh, why invite all these foreign entities into your country to uh, set policy, to determine how your country is going to be operating in terms of a global stage? For example, uh, the United Nations. The United Nations is a controlling body, a global body, and Hillary Clinton and her ilk are embracing a policy set by the, for yeah, the like, for example, the United Nations. That's a really good one. And the uh, I'm sorry, but the, the, there is no buddy out there who are not within our borders should, who should have any say in how we run our individual countries. This is why uh, the United Kingdom, they voted to get out of the European Union because they were seeing the same thing over there. The same thing was happening over there, for example. The, the European Union were dictating to countries. You're going to take in, for example, uh, X number of these migrants, it, things, a policy like that, right down to what kind of bloody toaster they were going to use. It was craziness. There was so much external control on these countries, they finally said enough of this. And I think the American people are paying attention to that. When the Brexit vote came down in June, I think American people really stood up, uh, sat up, and, and paid attention because they saw what was happening within their own borders. Obama is certainly a globalist, and they do not want outside interference. That is not the American way. It's. I honestly think that this is all being pushed to all the powers being consolidated into the U.N. Yeah. The U.N. Exactly. is becoming... It was created after World War II to try to make sure... Nothing like that ever happened again. And that is exactly what they're turning into. I mean, they're turning into exactly what they tried to stop. They're trying to consolidate all the power into the U.N. Obama's done it. Um, I believe um, Trodor. uh, Trodor? I know I'm messing up. Uh, (laughs) Tongue-tied. All the leaders have been trying to count down to the UN and put as much power into their pocket. Um, Financially, these leaders are making God knows how much money off of turning over all the power to um, the UN. And it's, I never believed it before when I started actually opening my eyes and doing the research, this one world nation, NWO, you know, Whatever you want to call it. There's so many different names, but Agenda 21 on the UN, and it says right in it, 
how it is looking to consolidate all the leadership into the UN to be a one world government. Exactly. And it's holy. You know, I bought into it's a conspiracy theory. It's a conspiracy theory. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm putting my tinfoil fedora on now. Yeah. Uh, well, as you were talking, I saw an article, uh, Fox News just put it up, that early voting suggests tight race in key state despise, despite Clinton's camp boast. Well, the problem is I, I don't want to say it's tight because so far there's been more Republicans, which is very rare in Florida, more Republicans have done mail-in and early voting so far. Early voting, you only got one day of it here in Florida, but for the mail-in vote, very, um, it's like 10, 20, 30,000 in favor of Republicans, which it's usually reversed. Yeah. So that That's is, amazing. yeah, when early voting goes in one direction, usually that candidate is the one that uh, wins that state. Well, the Republicans are overloaded in the early voting in Florida. Now, people are correlating that automatically to Trump. I'm not, but I, I'm I'm sure it's for Trump. But yeah, it, that's what I talked about before you called in. Also, how Hillary Clinton's campaign is running a psych op because my parents called up. You know, why is Hillary saying she won the election? And I had to explain that it's that psychological uh, uh, fight that they're doing because they're so far behind. The only thing they can do is try to convince voters. Well, surprisingly, Democrats are trying to stop people from voting. They always scream that they want everybody to vote, but they're trying to stop people from voting. Or they're trying to convince you to change your vote to Hillary because, well, she's leading, so you might as well give in and vote for her. It's... Oh, yeah, exactly. You know, that's the thing, too, uh, that there is uh, that dissension, too. I was uh, I was uh, talking about uh, nationalism versus uh, globalism, and that is something that people was, must must pay attention to when they go to the uh, voting booth. Do they want a globalist as a president, or do they want a nationalist? Because this is going to affect everything from immigration, foreign policy, you name it. And this is what uh, you and I discussed a little earlier in terms of immigration is that you're going to have, if you have um, an influx of immigration, you're going to have an influx of a voting base. And if you are a liberal, uh, I'm so sorry, I just, I just, uh, I just want to take my uh, stupid stick and hit, hit <laughs> I want to hit them really hard. But when you have a voting base that is keen towards the liberal because the liberals are malleable and they'll give you whatever you want. I mean, look at what uh, Hillary, Hillary Clinton is, is promising the moon. Um, everything from health care to free education. What? Free edu- uh, post-secondary education. I mean, we can't, first of all, that is unfor- unaffordable. And second of all, it interferes with the uh, striations of the student who is actually wanting to uh, uh, obtain a higher education based on earnestness and good marks. Now, if you have free education and anybody can apply, for example, that's going to create havoc within the post-secondary school system. And plus two, who's going to pay for it? You, your tax dollars. How are we going to sustain something like this? What about foreign policy in bringing in um, all of these uh, foreigners? What about uh, them being motivated by uh, humanitarian impulses? They want to help the world. Well, essentially what they want to do is they want to interfere with the rest of the world. I'm sorry, but I am, as a nationalist, not interested in saving the world. I'm interested in saving my country and ensuring the people within it are prosperous and successful. But that's not the ideology of a globalist, and that's what Hillary Clinton is. She is putting the welfare of the American people behind the welfare of those who have absolutely no say and should not have any say uh, within the business of the American people. It's We've talked about it uh, time and time again. Um, I, I, I have no hate towards any country. Um, you know, I joke around that Canada's the little sister America never wanted. Um, <laughs> I, but it's... 
a country needs to have borders and secure borders to be a country. Without them, they're nothing. Mm-hmm. Uh, Canada needs to be Canada. Mexico needs to be Mexico. I don't want Mexico to change who they are. Do I want them to have a strong economy so they can support their own citizens? Yes, but not at the expense of America. The, exactly. I, I kind of give it uh, – um, it's not exactly pertaining to this. I hope people can get where I'm going with it. Then we got to go to break. The way I kind of look at it is also kind of the way the United States is always lending money. Okay. Yeah. And it would be that if, okay, I'm in my house and I'm having financial troubles in my house. Now, I got a neighbor that's two blocks over that hates me and is financial trouble. So what I'm going to do is borrow money from another neighbor to give it to that neighbor that hates me that's never going to pay me back for it, but I got to pay back the original loan. Well, why should I try to help my neighbor out and make his house secure, which is going to make my house less secure. You know, why would I do that? You take care of your own house before you take care of any of your neighbors. And you should help your neighbors. Yep. But you make sure your house is in order before you do anything with anybody else. And that's even interfering in other people. It's one. I know I'm jumping all over, so I apologize, Kel, that I'm kind of jumping, but. You know how my brain works. <laughs> I... oh, no, you're you're ex- you're extolling everything that I believe in, everything that I I, I think, and that yes, I totally agree. Is that there there is nothing wrong with being um, a nationalist and having a little bit of eth- ethnocentrism thrown in there too. Hillary Clinton too. Uh, she would take away your rights as individuals and turn you into a multicultural. A society where it would be all cultures are equal. And if all cultures are equal, then all cultures deserve the same treatment. And that includes your neighbor. And if uh, all cultures are equal, then we have to help our neighbors, i.e., let's go into Ethiopia and feed the children. Well, I'm sorry, but um, we have children in the United States that are starving. I mean, we have breakfast programs. I mean, what is up with that? We have parents who can't even feed their own children in the United States of America. Why do we want to go over and help our neighbors in Ethiopia and feed their kids? I got in a discussion with my neighbor last night, too, about some of that. Is it, you know, we have all these immigrants coming in, illegal immigrants, and our government fawns all over them and dumps billions of dollars into helping them. And we got vets that went to war and did horrible things that are living on the street. Have no yeah. have no home, have no way to take care of themselves, and our government dumps them out on the street and cares more about. And this administration really has done it. Past administ- um, administrations, Republican and Democrat, have done it. This is not a, uh, a partisan issue. This is our government would rather take care of people that they know are going to vote for them than to take care of the people that stood up for the values of this country. I hate, and We're going to have to take a quick break, and um, we'll come back and continue this conversation. Uh, you're listening to the Reaver of Common Sense right here on SHR Media, High Plains Pundit Radio, ICRN Network, Red Nation Rising Radio, YouTube Speaker, and iTunes, and we will be right back. Now, for Arnell's, we know you may have only one shop to harvest that trophy, so we have thousands of accessories and replacement parts to improve your chances. We know how much you love to shoot, so our gunsmiths' articles and videos will help you do more and get more out of your guns. We also value your hard work and money. That's why only Brownells backs up everything we sell with a 100% unconditional lifetime guarantee. Brownells, the world's largest supplier of firearm accessories and gunsmithing tools. 
Breaking news. According to the latest report coming out of SHR Media, a merchandise store to support both the Reaver of Common Sense and SHR Media has just been unleashed to the general public. Be forewarned that this site can be contagious and numerous items can be purchased to support the best news programming. Go to Reaver.one website and click on the store link to check out the merchandise. We were a common sense hosted by my dad, Jersey Joe. Beware, the Jersey Takeover is here every Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern Center Time. You can catch the Reaver Common Sense Show hosted by Jersey Joe. Right here on shrmedia.com and hyphensdailynews.com. Only Jersey can deliver hell like no one else. So consider this your fair warning. In a world controlled by corrupt politicians. You got a business. That, you didn't build that. A team of ordinary men emerge from the ashes to give voice to the voiceless and hope to the hopeless. Sackhead Sean. Dude, I'm not saying cat from a stupid bro. Sackhead Clint. All good friends of ours usually show, show up drunk. drunk. Also starring Sako as the producer. I'm a little bit drunk, I'm a little bit drunk, cause I'm drinking, drinking, drinking. They are the Sackheads Radio Show. Every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Pacific on shrmedia.com. Every Wednesday night, 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you can catch the Southside Mutt Show with its hosts, the Jersey Boys, Jersey Joe and Crash, right here on SHR Media and High Plains Pundit Radio, where we will be digging up the dirt. Times are dark. The people misled by corrupt politicians, lied to by establishment media, and deceived by the false messages of Islam. A nation in confusion needs a guide. It needs a man with a cane. I'm Dave Milner. Join me on Spreaker, SHR Media, High Plains Talk Radio, Live Rebooting Liberty, and YouTube for a unique brand of commentary on the Unpleasant Blind Guy. Because truth is not always pleasant. If you miss a show, don't worry. You can catch the replays two ways, RebootingLiberty.com or the ReverbCommonSense.com. While you're there on Reverb Common Sense, don't forget, drop in your email and keep up to date on everything going on, or click the like button on the Facebook widget. Now on to the Reverb of Common Sense. This show contains language that some viewers may find offensive. Listener discretion is advised. And now on to the show. And welcome back to the Reaver of Common Sense. I am your host, Jersey Joe, and I'm trying to make sense out of the senseless, and I got a lot of help today with Kel here. Uh, The Jersey Takeover is here. We have expanded to two hours every Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And if you want to support the show and support SHR Media, go to reaver.one backslash shop. And I got to give a shout out because... I have the tagline of making sense out of the senseless. And who was the great person that came up with that and gave it to me? (laughs) Ta-da! Kel. Kel came up with that and and gave that to me one day in the chat room. And I was like, oh, that would be great. She's like, yeah, that's why I told you. Go ahead and use that. I was like, ooh, really? Cool. 
<laughs> it's yours, baby. It's all yours. I, I, and I love it. Yes. And uh, speaking of uh, reader of common sense and, and all the cool swag, by the way, folks, you, you could buy cool swag, by the way, at the Reaper uh, website. Uh, uh, Joe, your T-shirt. I got one of your T-shirts. I love it. It's just beautiful. It's fantastic. And it went all the way to Europe with me this summer. I, I, I'm amazed. I knew I got around, but I didn't know I got around internationally. Oh, yeah. That that, that bad boy. Uh, let me see. My T-shirt has been to Ireland and Wales, and next year it's going to Scotland with me. <laughs> uh, it's, I want to get over there so bad, but uh, number one, I have a fear of flying. I have trouble flying from Florida to New Jersey, which is a two-and-a-half-hour mm. flight. Flying to Europe probably would be a lot worse. Um, but yeah, as I discussed on your show when you had me on, um, my family way, 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 way back is from England. And in fact, that's uh, it was Sir Edward Antrobus, who was yes. the... Um, North, that would be in the northern regions of England. Yep. And it's a town called, Ant- or a village slash parish called Antrobus. And that's where my ancestors are from. And it, I was on the show before the Brit X vote, and that's why I was, you know, hoping that they. I, I have the opinion of I uh, I might talk about my opinion about foreign countries and what's going on, but it's their job and their right to do what they want. I have no right to tell Britain what to do whatsoever. I was hoping that they would leave the UK and become an independent sovereignty again, which they did, uh, even against all polls. I don't believe that other countries have a right to tell other countries how to act and vote. I've been seeing that a lot lately of foreigners uh, stepping into the American election. It's not like we're having a conversation, hey, you you don't like what you see here and this and that. They're telling me I can't vote for Trump. I have to vote for Hillary and all this. And it's like you're bitching about foreign interference from Russia, but you're a foreigner telling me how I have to vote, so you're interfering with my election. And they're like, yes, because it affects me. Well, doesn't it affect Russia also? No. How does it not affect Russia? And it's this double standard, and it's it just amazes me. Honestly, I haven't really come across any American support for Hilly. It's always foreign support. And, and see, that brings us right back to the issue of globalism and that globalists don't care about your cultural heritage. They don't care that people are going to come in and rearrange your furniture in your own home. They don't care that uh, uh, national heritage is vital to the survival, the cultural survival and the social survival of any given country. Cultural heritage people is a repository of wisdom, all right? Wisdom and lessons that have been passed down from our forefathers to us in that we create our own national and cultural identity. People like Hillary Clinton want to take that away from you. She wants to import all sorts of peoples who do not necessarily share your uh, cultural heritage, the pride within it, and the fact that if you do not have a strong sense of identity, then what's the point in being um, a A country country. again? Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Like I, I, I'm, I, I'm. Huh. Yeah. I'll, I'll have to say. I'll have to say, and I'm not ashamed to say this, Joe, is that I am ethnocentric. Now, <clears throat> a lot of people think that that means racism. No, racism is when you deny the black man the job because he's simply a black man. That's racism. Uh, racism is when you uh, believe that. Uh, Um, uh, Margaret Sanger was a wonderful person, like Hillary Clinton does. But uh, being ethnocentric means that you take pride in your culture, you take pride in your country, and you do not want to see it torn asunder by it turning into a a multicultural mosaic. Like, what happens when uh, you get a mosaic? Well, have you ever seen what a mosaic looks like? It's a series of uh, clusters all over the place that makes absolutely no sense. And it really is hard on the eyes. But that is 
a, a cultural mosaic does not work in any given country. It never has. We have official multiculturalism here in Canada, Jill. It's a failed experiment oh. because we have to treat every culture that wanders into Canada, doesn't matter where they're from, we have to treat their culture as equal to ours. And what happens is then we dilute our own identity, our national identity. People like Hillary Clinton don't care about that, though. She doesn't care about the rich history of the American people and the contributions of our forefathers at all. She doesn't care that the Constitution was based on national values. She, does, she doesn't care that uh, she could take that away from you. All that matters to her is that she is in pursuance of the White House, and to do that, she will engage in global globalism. Well, she's been doing it for, what, 30-some-odd 30, 30 years. People, think about the Clinton Foundation. Look at the uh, donations pouring into that uh, yeah. money laundering scheme. I mean, she's got... Uh, she, she She's in the pocket of uh, those uh, uh, as far away as Saudi Arabia, and very, very, very powerful elites, globalist elites. She is in the pocket of all of these people. Why do you think that the Clinton Foundation was established so that they could rub each other's back globally? And it is a pay place scheme. And the Clinton Foundation, I'm surprised that's still going, by the way, well, Joe. I thought that would have been shut down. The one thing that I hate is this pay-to-play term. And I know everybody's using it, but to me, that's softening the actual act. It's bribery. Mm -hmm. It's bribery. And and also, um, I didn't get the thought together, but uh, you had talked about how, you know, with this um, uh, one world government, you know, they want to make everybody equal and all this bullshit. Have you ever noticed yeah. those that want to make everyone equal are always exempt from being equal to everybody else? They always have this high amount of wealth that they never share to make everybody equal to them. They're always better than everybody else, but everybody else has to be equal. And I, I just uh, I yeah. find it funny. And that's the cultural mentality. And that people like it or not, countries... Uh, especially um, Islamic-based countries like Saudi Arabia, Jordan, uh, Pakistan, they're ethnocentric because they believe in one ideology, that being um, Islam, and they believe in one goal, and that is to, well, first of all, world domination, the caliphate, uh, defeat the kafir, the non-believer, which would be you and me, Joe. But they... Have an they have an ideology and they have an identity, and they will come and they will not assimilate into the host country. And this is something else that Hillary Clinton is perilously close to engaging in if she becomes a pro, um, prime minister, if she becomes president, <laughs> is that uh, she will dilute the cultural identity and allow all of these other cultures to uh, dilute you. They won't assimilate with you. They will not adopt your local values. What they'll do is that they'll erode and dilute your local values and convince you that certain practices are, well, better. Uh, Try this out. And the next thing you know, you're practicing Sharia law, for goodness sake. It it won't be long before something like that is going on. And you could see it in um, all different countries. Uh, Well, in um, the U.K., look at London. I mean, the guy oh, went right. along thinking everybody thought, oh, great, we're becoming, you know, multicultural, we're, we're expanding. And now this guy's like, I'm not going to listen to what the um, parliament says. I'm going to do what I want. I'm going to expand uh, um, immigration into London. I'm going to allow whoever wants. We're going to expand the Muslim population. This man is not. He was a, a farce. It was not who he appeared to be when he ran for that government position. Oh, no. So, yeah, the mayor of London, Sadiq Khan, he won by duplicity. Absolutely. That and the and the mosque whipped vote is what we would call it. See, and this brings us back again to cultural identity. What happened there in London is that this Muslim became mayor of London because his own kind in a group think uh, voted for him, not because of his 
ability to make London, the city of London, a better place, a more efficient place, and to uh, clean up uh, crime and poverty, anything like that. No, they voted for him simply for the fact that he is a fellow Muslim. Yeah, and that's exactly what they voted for. And they knew that they were going to be able to get away with, well, murder with him in office. And we're exactly seeing that. It's And how Parliament isn't coming in and smacking his hand going, no, you will do what we tell you to do. He's only a mayor, unless I don't understand the government over there. He's only a mayor. I mean, how can he overrule... The Parliament decision. I, 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 I don't understand that. I really don't understand how the UK political system works in that fashion, but I do know that he has a lot of political influence when it comes to local issues. When I say local, I mean uh, issues within the city of London, of course, being the mayor. But uh, because he has so much political sway, he can influence a policy within the Parliament. I think he, he could... For example, um, influence um, 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 I- internal uh, policy that would uh, see, for example, monies uh, coming down into the uh, City of London. Uh, the City of London, they could uh, uh, apply for uh, grants because uh, there are certain pockets within London that are needing attention, and he could influence it that way. But where that money ultimately goes, that's the thing. We don't know because there is no accountability. Uh, for some of these politicians. And that's not only in the United Kingdom, that's in the United States and Canada as well, is that we have absolutely no um, accountability uh, for these uh, so-called community leaders. And I suppose every politician has to consider him or herself a community leader because they are supposed to be working for the people. But it doesn't always seem to turn out that way. They are in it for uh, more nefarious uh, reasons. And I think Sadiq Khan, as the mayor of London, that he would have a lot of sway in in policy issues and how it, because he can say this will affect my city. And therefore, I want some modifications made to any of these uh, parliamentary bills that might come to pass. It, it's just, it's craziness. And it, that, that's liberalism. <laughs> It's mind-boggling to me, and again, it goes to if it wasn't for uh, mainstream media, the, these types of ideas would have died a long, long time ago. Yeah. It, it, well, you know, and that's the thing, too, is that the, the the federal governments are not supposed to interfere with the business of the local governments, but there's also that trickle-up effect as well. And the thing is, too, because of who Sadiq Khan is, is that they're afraid of offending, and that is the political correctness that comes into play. The political correctness of not offending the Muslim. It, it, I don't know why. It, it, I really don't understand why it's Muslims in particular. Like, I don't see it, uh, Buddhist or uh, Hindus or Sikhs or Jewish peoples or Christian peoples being offended so easily as those that adhere to the um, ideology of Islam. That I have, well, I think it's because they're violent and they really will kill us. Maybe that has something to do with it, Joe? I don't know. Uh, I, no. I, I don't know. You have um, Merkel. I mean, why would you risk destroying your country to bring the... Ma- I don't understand the end play. The end game on this, and yeah, I know I called it a game, and it's not technically a game, but to me, life is a big game. You're constantly uh, making moves and all that, but why would you risk destroying your country knowing it's going to destroy your country? What is she getting out of it? I think a lot of it has to do with her own personal ideology as well. I mean, she is a Eastern German, and she was um, on the other side of the of the wall, and I think that uh, she has a very much a socialist um, ideology in that she feels that uh, she has an obligation, once again, to engage in global activities and try to save the world, and she wanted to be a champion of uh, saving the uh, hapless migrant. Now, when this migrant business uh, first started, of course, we were seeing a civil war in Syria. It was just imploding in Syria, and people were fleeing for their lives, and I, I will grant that. 
of people, of course, if you're in your right mind, you have a sense of self-preservation. You want to survive. You want to live. And so they were fleeing. They had nowhere to go. And I thought initially she thought she was a champion of uh, saving these uh, poor, hapless uh, so-called refugees. But then it turned into something much different. We were finding out that these were not indeed refugees. They were simply migrants. And most of them were men of military age coming out of the Middle East. And that this was a, an Islamic State-based plan to further the caliphate, to uh, infiltrate local culture with their Islamic ideologies. And I think Angela Merkel found out too late that she got herself into it way too deep. And, and now it's almost impossible to re uh, reverse the tide. And a lot of countries, though, are, are seeing this. Uh, uh, the, uh, Poland and the Ukraine, uh, they're standing up and they're saying, no, we can't deal with this. And they're, they're seeing what's happening in Germany at, at the U.K., and that's why they voted Brexit last June, because they didn't want the European Union dictating how many uh, migrants they were taking in, etc. But Angela Merkel, she is also a globalist. And so uh, when uh, two ideologies like that meet, it, it's amazing the havoc that it, it can create. But Germany is indeed in a lot of trouble right now, as is uh, Sweden and Norway, no, it, because of this embracement of the migrants. Sweden just voted to allow the ISIS battle flag to be flown legally. Mm -hmm. That blew my mm -hmm. mind. It's... Um, the only thing I see as a positive coming out of this is it is now going to push a lot of countries out of the uh, EU. I think um, especially I think they're waiting right now to see how the vote goes in the United States. Uh, Brett X was a nice oh, start. Yeah. If Donald Trump gets elected, I, I, I think that's going to be the death blow for the U EU. Even if Don Hillary gets in, I don't know if the EU is going to survive. You have too many countries that have uh, a, a large push that they want to leave the EU. It's not working out. It, it's Now they're uh, going to be talking a, a tax for a military. they got to create their own military. I'd be going, wait a minute, this is not what this is supposed to be. Time out. Hold on. You know, I'd have a lot of questions. Oh, it, it, exactly. I think what we're um, going to experience is, well, we're already seeing it, is there is a massive um, exodus of uh, Germans leaving Germany be, because of the infiltration, the dilution of their national identity. They just don't feel that Germany is Germany at all anymore. We have uh, pe people like Viktor Orban, who is... Um, uh, where is he from? Where is he from? It'll come to me in a moment. Mm. But uh, he is um, another leader uh, within uh, the uh, European Union, and he wants to get out of it because he is uh, seeing the writing on the wall, and he is a, he's, he's a nationalist, and he does not want to have any outside influence, and so he is standing up. He is the uh, Prime Minister of Hungary, and he is seeing what's happening with the influx of uh, foreign bodies entering his country. And he is uh, standing up and saying, no, we're not going to take this anymore. And he is fighting the European Union uh, to the now. Him uh, within Hungary, those within the Ukraine, and those within Poland. As a matter of fact, um, Hungary just celebrated its 60th anniversary being freed from the uh, Soviet Union. And Poland was there for the celebrations. And Hungary and Poland are working in solidarity right now to combat the uh, policies of the European Union, to get out of the European Union, and to determine their own destinies as individual countries, as nationalists. They are determined that they are going to preserve their, their cultural, their social, their economic, their trade, and they will be in defiance of any nefarious body like the European Union, which I see as a nefarious body. I think the European Union, like the, the United Nations, are both very, very dangerous global bodies. And so it's great that we're seeing the pushback in, in Europe, in, in Hungary in particular, with uh, Viktor Orban. And I hope that when Donald Trump is elected, Donald Trump will channel the likes of Viktor Orban, and uh, Donald Trump will put his foot down and say, no, 
We are America. We are nationalists. We are not going to play by the same uh, rule books as uh, Hillary Clinton wants to play by with yeah. these uh, foreign bodies. I think this is what it's really going to come down to. And I think you're right there, Joe, is that people are sitting up in the United States and they're going, hey, what's happening to my country? Yep. You know, where, where's everything going? Uh, uh, um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm. My name is Jersey Joe, and I have a voice, but I can't voice it. Why? Because I might offend somebody. Because I have to be politically correct about it now. Like that is just craziness. It, it, it is. I wonder, uh, fifty years from now, hundred years from now, how yeah. this time period will go down in history. It will it be the beginning of the destruction of freedoms, or will it be when, you know, the citizens stood up and revolted back against the ruling class? Um, honestly, I've sat back and, and wonder how will it be looked at? Will this time period be, you know, ignored? Um, or will it be written that this is a time when the citizens rose up against the ruling class, like yeah. it's happened so many times in history, and it seems like the history, as the saying goes, um, history uh, has a habit of uh, repeating itself. Um, but <laughs> it, it, it seems that now I lost my train of thought. It seems that um, we're repeating that history of the governments always tend to get out of control and every so often the citizens have to stand up and smack them. Uh, I'm hoping that this one will be a nonviolent way of the citizens of all these countries. Cause you like, we just were talking about with that. You have that in, um, uh, Europe, you have it in uh, Canada. You have a lot of citizens standing up United States, uh, uh, South America, all over, you have citizens standing up and saying, we've had enough of this bullshit from our governments. It's time to take control. It's time to put them in their place. Well, you, you know what's going to happen? You're going to um, end up in a country called Idiocracy. I don't know if you've ever seen that movie, Idiocracy. Mm, but um, uh, that's where yeah. the uh, the dumber people are the ones that run the country. Um, is that what Luke Wilson yeah, it's uh, the, the the premise is that they take uh, in, the, these individuals and they put them to sleep and they wake up 500 years later yes. to discover that they're living in a dystopian uh, society and they have a rap star as their uh, president, yes. <laughs> President Camacho. Yeah. And yeah. this is it, is that um, everything has changed. Everything, um, average appearance, intelligence, behavior, everything has uh, changed in that there is no personal responsibility and that there is no um, sense of self-worth. They are in, engaging in um, everything from advertising to commercialism and cultural anti-intellectualism. It's all just going crazy now, 500 years later, after these two pr uh, principal uh, characters wake up. I think one is average Joe Bowers, and there is another character... Um, in this movie, too, that, uh, oh, her name is Arita, and she, they are both up, um, they are selected for what is called suspended animation, right? And it's this experiment uh, based on the grounds, like I said, of their appearance, their intelligence, their behavior. They're just average American citizens. And they wake up in this, uh, well, it's like a brave new world, except that uh, there is absolutely no personal responsibility. And that uh, they... The entire United States of America is devoid of intellectual curiosity. It's uh, devoid of a social responsibility and co coherent notions of justice and human rights. And so average Joe, Bauer, and Rita, they're looking around and they're like, what, what, what happened to my country? And when they tune in to uh, see what's going on and they find out who their president is, like, oh, my goodness, like this guy is uh, some sort of rapper. And what is his name in the movie? It is uh, President Dwayne Elizondo Mountain Dew Herbert Camancho. Yeah. That is the leader of the country. A rap singer is the leader of the United States of America, which has sunk so low in the 500 years that they've been in suspended animation that there's no way they feel they can get the country back. And that mirrors exactly what you just said.
Because if this continues, it will be. It will be gone. It will be America alone. And not only alone, but America gone. It, it, it won't be here anymore. And that affects so many countries. Uh, you know, I'm not trying to praise America because I'm an American, but how many times has America stepped up right. to help countries in time of need? Yeah, that, with every good, there's a bad. I, I understand that. But we, we've we done a lot of good, and without America, I don't know where this world would be. This world would be worse off. Um, I hate to cut you off. It's time for one last break, and then we have no more breaks to the end of the show. So hopefully you are going to continue sticking around. I love having you on. Oh, thanks, Joe. I'd love to. All right, and uh, you're listening to the Reaver of Common Sense right here on SHR Media, High Plains Pundit Radio, ICRN Network, Red Nation Rising Radio, iTunes, YouTube, and Speaker. Spreaker. I always mess that up. We will be right back. Listening to the SHR Media Network. Now, for our males, we know you may have only one shot to harvest that trophy, so we have thousands of accessories and replacement parts to improve your chances. We know how much you love to shoot, so our gunsmiths' articles and videos will help you do more and get more out of your guns. We also value your hard work and money. That's why only Brownells backs up everything we sell with a 100% unconditional lifetime guarantee. Brownells, the world's largest supplier of firearm accessories and gunsmithing tools. Breaking news. According to the latest report coming out of SHR Media, a merchandise store to support both the Reaver of Common Sense and SHR Media has just been unleashed to the general public. Be forewarned that this site can be contagious and numerous items can be purchased to support the best news programming. Go to Reaver.one website and click on the store link to check out the merchandise. We were a common sense hosted by my dad, Jersey Joe. Beware, the Jersey Takeover is here every Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern Center Time. You can catch the Reaver Common Sense Show hosted by Jersey Joe. Right here on shrmedia.com and highplainsdailynews.com. Only Jersey can deliver hell like no one else. So consider this your fair warning. Wednesday night, 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you can catch the Southside Mutt Show with its host, the Jersey Boys, Jersey Joe and Crash, right here on SHR Media and High Plains Pundit Radio, where we will be digging up the dirt. Times are dark. 
The people, misled by corrupt politicians, lied to by establishment media, and deceived by the false messages of Islam. A nation in confusion needs a guide. It needs a man with a cane. I'm Dave Milner. Join me on Spreaker, SHR Media, High Plains Talk Radio, Live Rebooting Liberty, and YouTube for a unique brand of commentary on the Unpleasant Blind Guy. Because truth is not always pleasant. If you miss a show, don't worry. You can catch the replays two ways, RebootingLiberty.com or the ReverbCommonSense.com. While you're there on Reverb Common Sense, don't forget, drop in your email and keep up to date on everything going on, or click the like button on the Facebook widget. Now on to the Reverb of Common Sense. Listening to the SHR Media Network. This show contains language that some viewers may find offensive. Listener discretion is advised. And now on to the show. And welcome back to the Reaver of Common Sense. I am your host, Jersey Joe, and I'm trying to make sense out of the senseless. The Jersey Takeover is here. We have expanded it at two hours every Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So I just saw uh, some information pop up that Clinton and Kane had to cancel an event in Ohio due to lack of interest. Now, what that also, I was posting while we were doing the show, videos of Trump in um, Tampa yesterday. And I know the stadium where it was held, they hold concerts. And I'm talking Motley Cruz played there. Uh, some of your biggest country stars go there to play. And the thing was jam-packed. What I also found was another video of uh, a rally that Tim Kaine was holding, because Hillary hasn't been campaigning that much, in Florida. And 30 people showed up for it. 30 people compared to several thousand people. And now they had to cancel. And I've heard of multiple events getting canceled by Hillary's campaign because nobody signed up for it. But they say that doesn't matter in the election. But uh, Obama, they said, changed the way you have to look at an election because you have to take into account the Twitter uh, likes, the... um, our followers, the FBI uh, likes that are going on involved there, how many people show up to the rallies. You got to take that all into account to show how a candidate's doing. And now they're saying, oh, that doesn't matter. None of that matters because it's blowing Hillary out of the water. Oh. Sorry. Uh, you, Amen to that. Uh, you actually had a question that you wanted to ask with the. No, yeah, I did. I was looking at the uh, the Washington Examiner, and they came out with a new survey that was uh, uh, it came out of the uh, Brookings uh, Institution actually, and it was the uh, 2016 Americans Value Survey, and it found that just 43 percent have faith in their vote. Now, fewer than half, 43 percent of the public say that they have a great deal of confidence that their vote will be counted accurately, but that's fewer than half. That's only 43%. Now, roughly 4 in 10 at 38% of Americans report having only some confidence, while close to 1 in 5, 17%, say they have hardly any confidence their vote will be accurately accurately counted. Now, that's a rather disturbing uh, statistic that they're relating there. Now, Democrats are saying... Uh, that uh, more than likely than Republicans and independents, they report a high degree of confidence in the voting system at 55% versus 44%. But that is still scary that the American people, that there is still a modicum of doubt amongst the American people that their vote won't make a difference because they are concerned about vote rigging. That's something Donald Trump brought up uh, during the election. Uh, uh, sorry, yeah, well, uh, along, yeah, well, of course, uh, during the campaign. But at the uh, third debate in particular is when he was asked by moderator Chris Wallace, would you contest the election results if Hillary Clinton won? And he said, uh, Chris, I'll talk to you later. Now, that sounded kind of, kind of cryptic, but I think that people now are getting it, that there is a real threat about vote rigging. Like, 
How do you feel about that? Do you think that there's a real possibility that Hillary Clinton is uh, much more dirty than we already know her to be? Uh, uh, I I know there's going to be attempts at rigging this, but I think with the Veritas videos coming out, uh, I don't think we're going to see as much as they plan because they know they can't get away with as much. Um, there is, I believe that there's attempts at rigging these elections. I I, I honestly believe that. And I find it funny, er, not you, but the media was making such a big deal out of Trump's comment that he said he wouldn't guarantee that he wouldn't con- contest the decision. Yeah. Um, let's look at a, a couple facts here. Number one, if that's their only takeaway from the whole debate, I, I find it funny. That is their one negative that they, they decided to jump on. They couldn't find right. anything. That means everything else was damn good at what he said. Um, number two, politicians always say what they think or what they're what the people want them to say. That's what politicians yeah. do. Trump is a businessman. And when someone says, hey, I want to do business, will you agree to do business with me? He'll say, I want to look at the contracts. I want to look at what's being offered, what's going on. He wants yeah. to look at the facts of what's happening. He's not going to agree to something unless he knows all the information. He's a businessman. That's the way he thinks. So to sit there and and for them to jump all over him because he wouldn't agree to something that he doesn't know the information about, I applaud him. He's not just giving out answers to give out answers. So you want to make him doing his research. Yeah. yeah, he's doing his research, but he, it's also the way his, his mind works is he wants to see the facts. And they talk yeah. about it. What about Al Gore and the Democrats? 16 years now they've been crying about the rigged election and Florida screwed it up. They still yeah. cry to this day. Al Gore did not concede. Hillary Clinton was um, said that uh, he should not concede to the uh, and uh, give up. On the election. Hillary Clinton was going on and on about it. The Democrats cried for a long time. But now, because Trump will not... How is that treason? And and, and all the stuff, words that they've come about for it. They're trying to make a mountain out of nothing. It's not even a molehill. It's nothing. It's a non-issue. And all they're doing is solidifying support for Trump more and more. All this shit that she's doing is pissing off people more and more. You know, people can see she says that she's running. When they go lie, I go ho. Uh, I when they go low, I go high. Yeah, everybody yeah. could see the bullshit. We knew the tactics she was going to be using. It's the same tactics they've used time and time and time and time again. And it's same thing with football. You keep calling the same play, you're gonna lose the game big time. And that's what. Hillary's doing. She's using the same playbook they've used for 30 years. Bingo. And that is exactly it. I'm going to skate off in a moment so you can uh, wrap up the show. But before I uh, do, I just want to say to people that um, you have uh, much love and support from me up here in Canada. And I will do anything and everything possible to ensure that America is great again. And I do endorse uh, Donald Trump. I hope that uh, you have a successful election on November 8th and uh, you do the right thing and vote for the right candidate. Because if you end up with Hillary Clinton, folks, once again, it's going to be another four years at the very least of Eric Hussein Obama. And if that happens, America will be gone. Donald Trump, for all his um, flaws, he is indeed a man who loves his country. He is an American. He is a nationalist, and he has your interest at heart. He is not one of these that are playing along on the global stage and pandering to global interests. No, he wants to take care of you. He wants to ensure your borders are secure, and he wants to make sure the right people are immigrating to the country. He wants to make sure that you are safe and that you have rights as Americans. He's going to ensure that big government does not interfere with local matters. He will probably be a a huge surprise, a delightful surprise. I think that Donald Trump, he is a smart man. He is uh, surrounding himself with wonderful, wonderful advisors. He has a great team, and he will work with that team. He's a team player, too, and he'll listen to you. 
So on that note, that is my political spiel and my appeal from Canada, Joe. There you go. Also, give everybody uh, the information where they can catch your show and get a hold of you. Oh, absolutely. You can uh, listen to me on Block Talk Radio. I'm there Monday and uh, Thursday afternoons at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. I'm um, RSB Radio, Red Fox Blogger Radio, and I am also part of the Global Patriot Radio family. Uh, Tuesday evenings at 6 p.m. Eastern Time there. I am IAW. Infidels are watching. Uh, both shows can be heard primarily. My uh, my mother station is Block Talk Radio, so you can find all the shows there. But they're also carried on other devices like the Spreaker, uh, High Plains Pundit, um, SHR Media, YouTube, iTunes. <laughs> you can find me all over the place. Uh, and with that, I hate to see you go, but I understand you need to get going. Um, you have a open invitation anytime you want. Just Oh, thank you, Joe. And the same stands true for you. I I, I got to get back on your show. It's been a little bit. Um, oh, we have so much fun on our shows, like together. You oh. and I, we just rock and roll it, baby. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, well, let me finish wrapping up, and um, I'm at a total brain fart right now, to be honest. My head's kind of uh, <laughs> blank for a second. I'm sorry. Um, it's been a joy to have you. I, it's I can't say it enough. I I enjoy having you. I've I've had some of the greatest guests. I mean, uh, BZ coming on, Carrie, you, the three of you have improved my show dramatically every time you're on, and I appreciate you both, all three of you. So, and I also oh, thank you, Joe. I do look forward to coming back, and I will be back soon. I might have a few thoughts I will want to share with you after November 8th. <laughs> <laughs> well, So watch out for that. Hey, just give me a holler and we'll put you in there. So uh, Absolutely. And I want to say have a great... Oh. Right. Thank you so much, Joe. I'll All right. speak to you soon. All right. Bye. Okay. Bye-bye. And that was Kel from, uh, as she put it, uh, Red Fox Radio. It's... I, I appreciate her so much. I really do to the point that I'm kind of tongue tied that I can't come up with really anything that would mean any that would back up how I feel. Um, the heck's going on? Make sure. All right. It, it's no, thank you, Kel. Thank you. Um, Seriously, I, I got kind of uh, brain farted at the end because I couldn't think of anything that I could really praise uh, for you being on the show. I appreciate you so much. You've been a good friend. And I, I'm, I'm going over information, too. Um, and I didn't realize it, but, uh, okay, AT&T is trying to buy out Time Warner. That's going to uh, really change the atmosphere of our news because Time Warner is a part owner of CNN and that's going to put Fox News and CNN under the same umbrella which then could put um, the CNN chief uh, Jeff Zucker uh, as the new CEO It puts into chain of events that could really hurt Fox News even worse than it already is. And that could explain why they're acting the way they are. Besides the fact that they have donations into uh, Hillary Clinton. They have ties directly to her. Uh, Several of their uh, reporters have had lunches uh, with Hillary Clinton. But this just really ties it more to... We're screwed in the United States with our mainstream media. Uh, And I agree with Trump on the fact that I think these uh, uh, media moguls are getting too big for their own britches. I remember when, what was it, AT&T had to split up the phone company. 
because it was too big. These these medias are getting way too big and controlling too much of the information. And when you control that much of the information, there's too easy of a route to try to influence the information. It's scary at the directions everything is going on. It's where do we go from here? Um, we have a a we have a country that's majorly in trouble. I'm sorry. When we have a candidate who who has trouble getting thirty people. 30 people to show up. And another candidate gets thousands upon thousands of people to show up. And yet the media tries propping up the one that is losing. It, it. And why they do that, not only is so if there is rigging of the polls and she goes and wins... Oh, look at the polls. You know, we showed she was ahead. That's why she won. Or, it, you know, it was a close uh, uh, poll. So, yeah, she was able to squeak it out. Um, uh, yeah. It's mind-boggling. I'm trying to find something out real quick to... Uh... Okay, it's got a capacity of 20,000. It was the Mid-Florida Credit Union Amphitheater in Tampa. It's on the Florida State Fairgrounds. It can hold 20,000 people. 20,000, it was jam-packed. Jam-packed. And I don't even know how many people outside. Because you can sit outside. It's an open-air theater. So you could have sat outside with no problem to hear Trump speak. So to tell me that she is ahead, I will tell you you're full of shit. I will tell you that they're setting up for rigging of the polls. I, what more can I... It's... It's funny that Bloomberg says that Trump cherry picks polls when I see a lot of cherry picking going on. Let's see. Trying to find out if they are showing over. They're saying 20,000 plus. The crowd that was outside, they got a picture. The inside was jam-packed. And outside was almost just as big as a crowd. It's, holy shit. It's absolutely amazing how many people showed up. I, 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 um. And I'll go with, yes, Kel, it's. Nationalism versus globalism. And I've been saying that back to the primary that Trump is standing up for nationalism. And with that, it is that time of the show. 
it's been I, I can't thank Kel enough for coming on the show. I God do I appreciate that, Kel. Uh and I thank everybody who's tuning in to listen today. And with that, I will be back tomorrow. Tomorrow is my double day. I have the reverb of common sense from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then at 8 o'clock is the Southside Mutts, hosted by the Jersey Boys, myself, Jersey Joe, and Crash. Until then, have a great day and see you tomorrow. You've been listening to the Reaver of Common Sense with its host, Jersey Joe. You can tune in every day, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here on hppundit.com and shrmedia.com.